Hello and welcome to a special episode of Shattered Lives, Rich Ireland's crime podcast for the Irish Daily Star and Irish Mirror. I'm Mick O'Toole. I'm joined by Paul Healy. Hello, Paul. Hello, Mick. So this is, I think it's fair to say, we're going to talk about an issue that will probably be something we're going to be speaking about for the next couple of years. And that's uh, a, an operation called Kraken. And I think yes. we'll be using the word Kraken for years to come. We will. Um, you know, it, it, it's incredible how under the radar this uh, operation has been until uh, it was all started to to unfold yesterday when we got the news that there would be a massive press conference uh, by Europol involving uh, police forces from around the world, including our own on Garda Siakana. And this Operation Kraken uh, is an incredible breakthrough. Uh, so police forces uh, from around the world have broken into another encrypted uh, service. Uh, so we, we understand that authorities in Australia uh, were first to break into this encrypted service that's being uh, called Ghost. So people might recall the EncroChat hack from 2020. This is similar to that. Authorities have broken into an encrypted service being used by gangs around the world. And as a result of that, uh, there has been a massive operation and arrest. So 51 people have been arrested worldwide so far as part of this uh I suppose, breakthrough, they've gotten into these chats and they have caught these people red-handed and been able to seize uh, a, a, a significant quantity of drugs. And it, it, 11 of those arrests, 11 of the 51 people arrested were arrested here in Ireland over the past week. Uh, and so, some of the, the, the biggest part of the operation happened on Monday night. Before we get into the nitty-gritty of this, and I think it mm. is going to be fascinating, what's your sense of how big a deal this is? Well, this is massive, and I, I would say this is the biggest thing to happen since that infamous press conference in April 2022, uh, when the sanctions were announced uh, against the Kinahan Organised Crime Group. Um, this was on that level, I suppose, except we're not talking about the Kinahans today. We're talking about uh, the new biggest crime group, which is the family, and I'll come back to that Um but uh, this operation has basically blown open a whole new avenue of investigation for Angarda Shiakana because they will, for the first time, uh, be able to really dive into these encrypted chats and use them, hopefully, as evidence in court. Um, and as I said, 11 people were arrested, uh, one of whom we already understand uh, is a significant player in, in the organized crime group that we call the family. Um, and from everything which we'll get into, the senior members of Garchi Akana told us today, this operation will allow them to target the very top tier um, of this organized crime group. Uh, and and hopefully bring them to justice. So we're not talking about Kinahans, we're talking about another, probably the most significant uh, criminal organisation in this country. And and they're hoping now that they're going to be able to put the head off the snake. So uh, I'm supposed to be on leave. You were at the press conferences today. There were two press conferences. One was remote. You were there for the other one physically. Yeah. Well, I, I was interested to hear that... Uh, Detective Chief Superintendent Seamus Bullen, head of the Drugs and Organised Crime Bureau, if I'm right, effectively yep. said that the Kinnan cartel has been dismantled. I don't know, was it him or was it Justin Kelly? It was him. Okay, yeah, right. Um, so, but I'll, does, I'll does that, that mean? But yeah, but does that mean that they think they're going to do to the same to the family? In other words, are the the the, the family now in serious trouble as a result of this operation? Big time. And, um, you know, I, I thought it was significant uh, that Detective Chief Superintendent Seamus Boland said uh, that this operation targeted the primary target of Angarda Siakana. So the main uh, target of Angarda Siakana is this organized crime group. Now, they didn't name the family. We for, in the media refer to this gang as the family in order to be able to tell you about them because we have to categorize them in some way. The, the leading members of it are not known publicly, not named publicly like the leading members of the Kinahan cartel. But um, that's a question I just threw in at the very end of today's press conference. So uh, just to clarify to people, there were two major press conferences, the press conference, the Europol press conference, uh, and then the press conference in Dublin. Uh, members of the media here met uh, with c senior members of Angarda Siakana, including Detective Chief Superintendent Seamus Boland. Uh, and we had a, a press conference following the Europol one. And the question I just threw in at the end, because they were talking about this 
primary target. And I asked, well, look, can it be clarified? You know, are we talking about the Kinahan group here, which is, you know, publicly known, or are we referring to another gang? I mean, obviously we, we had an indication that it was another gang, but you know, it's important to, to ask that question and see what the guards have to say. And they said very interestingly that the Kinahan crime group is no longer the primary gang operating here in Ireland, impacting here on Ireland. It is another gang which is now the top target of Angarda Siakana, and, and we know that gang to be the family. I want to read out a quote from, if you don't mind, from Seamus Bowden, just in relation to that. He said, I can rest assure you that the Kinahan organised crime gang is no longer the primary organised crime gang in this jurisdiction or impacting in this jurisdiction. So our organised crime landscape is very much fragmented at this stage, and while a number of the groups, the four groups that are targeted in this particular phase of this operation have been considered by us in the past to be Kinahan affiliated organized crime groups, they are operating on their own. But the primary organized gang that's impacting in this jurisdiction in relation to cocaine and heroin trafficking was targeted in this investigation. So we okay. know, I mean, the, pri the, the primary facilitators of cocaine and heroin in this country are the family. So the, the fact that they're the biggest in Ireland will come as no surprise to listeners to Shattered Lives because we've spoken about this before and we did say that they are regarded as the number one domestic gang. And just if you remember, we we had a story that they were exporting around 8 million euros a month to launder. 8 million euros in cash was coming out of Ireland from them to, to launder. And we did say at the time that, guard, that they were the guard's number one target and that they were the number one crime gang in Ireland. Now, mm -hmm. I will have to say that I, I, the sort of the guidance we got was the, Ken the Kenahans are still sending more drugs into Ireland than anybody else. But from what you're saying is, the belief would be that the Kenahans are so fragmented that the family now send more drug more drugs into Ireland than anybody. Did you get that sense? Mm -hmm. Was that correct? I got that sense. And as as I said, we were told that this gang is the primary target of Angarda Siakana. So, I mean, their focus right now, their top target, it's not the Kinahan organized crime group. Now, that doesn't mean they've taken any focus off that. There are ongoing investigations into the Kinahans and files have been submitted to the DPP. So I would say largely that investigation stage is over and they're awaiting now a decision from the DPP. But the primary target now is this family crime group. We should just contextualize for people who the family are a little bit. Um, we've spoken about them on this podcast before, but they are based in the West Dublin area primarily. And they that's where they got their start. But they now are a gang with an international dim dimension. And that is obvious from this investigation because you have members of the Australian Federal Police, you've got Europol themselves, and you have the FBI who were all here in attendance during the operation uh, and during the searches that took place uh, on Monday. There were a total of 33 properties searched across the country, uh, many of which are connected to this family gang. And as I said, 11 people arrested. And significantly, uh, that operation that happened in the in the southeast of the country on Monday, uh, they recovered seven million euro worth of cocaine from an articulated lorry. And um, I'll just mention this here. If you're watching our video on YouTube, um, you will actually see a video supplied, an incredible video supplied by Gardaí um, of a very sophisticated, concealed part of this articulated lorry uh, where the drugs were hidden, um, this 7 million euro worth of cocaine. And they are now saying that a, a, a significant uh, person who was involved in the shipping of these drugs has been arrested as part of this probe. So that has dealt a significant blow to this gang. Um, we we'll have to be slightly careful because persons are going mm. to be before the courts. Um, but it, it just gives you an indication of the sophistication of this gang and the lengths that they go to to smuggle drugs and to uh, haul them around the country um, in these articulated lorries. And they're coming in from 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 all over. And it's important to, to say that it's not just articulated lorries they're using. Yep. Listeners will think back. Do you remember that big seizure? We spoke about it a few months ago at the uh, the airport, not the the airfield, Abbey Shrew. Yes, airfield. Yes, and that was mm -hmm. around eight million. But you remember we had a story the next day that there had been a number of shipments, and the guards would believe that there had been a number of uh, there had been a number of landings at the airport by at the airfield mm -hmm. by that man, and the guards would be, would believe that it's very likely that they were previous shipments. And I think it worked. We worked it out. 
about a 50 or 60 million euro worth of drugs. So they were, they are, it's fair to say, big operators. And what the way it struck me was, do you remember for a couple of years, whenever there was a seizure, people were asking, right, are these the Kenins, right? Yes. And you'd go, yeah, yeah, I think it's them. I just noticed even in the last two years, you know, you'd hear about seizures and you'd go, was it the Kenins? And you'd go, invariably, it would come back. No, I think it's the family, not the family, mm. they, would, they would name them. So that's, for me, was an indicator of how important they were. Plus the investigations you and I had been doing about the money coming in, about the, mo- the, the money that they were sending out, about the drugs that were coming in. So it's fair to say this was a very, very big operation. I will say they have a much lower profile than the Kenins. Yes. And I mean, it's interesting because some of their more senior members are still operating here in mm-hmm. Ireland, but they obviously have made connections in more recent years abroad. And, and that shows with the international aspect of this investigation. Um, I think there probably is a fear that they will eventually uh, try to abscond or leave the country. And, you know, that was certainly mentioned by the assistant commissioner, uh, Justin Kelly, that, you know, these gangs have an international dimension and they are attempting to operate internationally because they think that they're outside of the reaches of the law. And that is why, thankfully, now our guardia are, are cooperating with police forces around the world because they're basically sending a message to them that there's nowhere you can hide. But the senior members of this gang at the moment are still very much living and operating in in the Dublin area, as far as we know. And it, uh, they don't flash the cash, as you said. They do operate in a hidden manner. But if, it just goes to show you that with the length and breadth of this investigation and the amount of drugs that have been seized, they clearly have uh, an immense amount of power and wealth behind them, uh, albeit they don't show it. And another key difference to, from what I can see to the Kinahan cartel is they, 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 the, the family do not tend to resort to serious violence as much as the Kenahans did. So we know that there were 18 people killed in the Kenahan Hodge feud. 16 of them were by the Kenahans. There were other people killed outside Ireland and in, and in Ireland by the Kenahan cartel, maybe stretching back the last two years. We know that the family were implicated in the murder of a man called Gary Carey, the Canary, yes. in Dublin a few years ago in Communum. I also heard a whisper the other day that they were implicated in another murder. I won't go into it because I, I, I'm not sure if someone has been charged in relation to that one, but that's two murders. But that is dwarfed by the numbers of murders the Kinnan cartel have been involved in. So they do seem to be much more uh, aware of keeping a low profile. Big time. Um, now, I just want to I, I want to go into, if you don't mind, some of the detail of what we heard yes, today. Yes, let's get down it, to it. It, it, <laughs> it. It's hard to kind of... Uh, get your mind around it because we've actually, we were thrown a lot of information. And by the way, we're recording this podcast not long after me coming out of this press conference. And I'm quite overwhelmed by some of the information that we were told. Um, But as I said, there were 51 people arrested uh, worldwide um, in relation to this Operation Kraken and 11 of them were in this country. So we, uh, our our guardie have recovered 42 uh, encrypted devices that they believe had this software, this ghost software on it. Uh, 126 phones in total were seized. Um, just to try to explain this a little bit. Uh, the They say that they've totally dismantled this ghost system and that it was being used for drug trafficking, money laundering, and to facilitate and arrange extreme violence and even murders. Um, users, people can basically purchase this ghost uh, application, let's call it, without having to give any of their personal information. And they have three encryption standards this is all a bit technical but um you're given a code and uh, it then self destructs uh and basically these these criminal gangs they were not it, it, so there were 100 phones they think in operation here in Ireland in that were being used with this encrypted service but they don't necessarily think 100 people were using them at one time it's that the, these criminals would use them and then they'd get another one and they'd get another one so like burner phones so they weren't continuing to use the same device uh, every time they were using these this ghost app, but they're messaging their associates. And Gardy believed that the very senior members of of this gang were were the ones using uh, these devices to communicate with each other, to know where the drugs were coming in, to facilitate crime. So also just in relation to using those devices, it it, it that service of it, it facilitates them in being able to communicate securely without any kind of trace, uh, without without being able to well they thought to be able to trace back to them. This 
breakthrough now means that Gardaí will and they hope to identify the, the users behind these phones. And we've seen incredible pictures of these devices that have been seized from the hands of criminals. And we believe they've already broken into them. They've already seen the chats. And so I think there are a lot of very nervous organized criminals right now who know that Gardaí have accessed the chats that they have had spanning back uh, over, we don't know exactly how long, so we don't know whether these messages are live or whether they've actually got a treasure trove of years worth potentially of uh, encrypted conversations that are incredibly incriminating. And I think what's really fascinating, we should really delve into this now, is that this may be the first time we were discussing this before we came on, that Gardy will possibly be able to use mm -hmm. this kind of evidence in court. Um, so previously, when it came to the EncroChat hack in 2020, Gardy were using information from EncroChat to assist them in investigations, but you wouldn't have really heard of encrypted conversations in, in terms of evidence and people in court. They now think, and what we were told in this press conference, is that this, uh, hopefully, this uh, ghost app will be used in evidence in court cases down the line when they prosecute these people. So I think Justin Kelly alluded to that, the Assistant Commissioner in charge of serious crime investigations. I'd be interested to hear his rationale. Why does he think, or what, what was the guidance given as to why they think they will be, be able to use this Kraken ghost evidence in court as as opposed to EncroChat or uh, Sky ECC, which is Sky Global, which is the other one? Um, it, it was actually Detective Chief Superintendent uh, okay. Seamus Boland who, who got into that, and he was asked about that by members of the media who were who were sitting there uh, in the press conference he said um Ireland's legislation is is very good he said when it comes to this and he he said that there is legislation there that's stronger than in other countries that will allow us uh, to be able to use this stuff in evidence. He says ultimately Gardaí will present their cases, but it's up to the DPP, the Director of Public Prosecutions, uh, he says, to 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 make that decision as to whether the evidence is strong enough. But they believe, and Gardaí Siakana believe, that they will be able to use this stuff in evidence. He also said um, that it, it, this um, material they potentially could be able to use it in so he he referred to legislation recently brought in 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 more recent years that have allowed Gardaí to prosecute people for crimes that we didn't have previously so for example directing a crime gang mm. or for facilitating a crime those are two relatively new uh, crimes and we've seen people in more recent years being charged with them so they think they'll be after, able to go after organized criminals charging them with directing a crime gang and using this uh, these encrypted devices then to prove that they are the leader of an organization or that they are directing others to commit crime so EncroChat has been used significantly in Britain under an operation called Operation Ven Venetic by the National Crime Agency. We've spoken about this before, but it had never been used in Ireland. But earlier this year, there was evidence given in an Irish court, but it was in about uh, EncroChat, but it was in relation to an extradition request by the British. So technically, EncroChat has been used in an Irish court, but it's not an Irish trial per se. It's actually the British under Operation Venetic trying to get someone extradited. We can't go into this for legal reasons, but there is a person who they want to extradite and they have used Enquishat evidence in that process. But that will be a significant departure if the evidence from Ghost or Kraken is presented to the Irish courts. But I'll just, I'll just make one very quick point. The guards said that they seized drugs worth 16 million euro, is it? 16 million in total, right. yeah. That must have come from information that the guards got from this ghost uh, oh, setup. Did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, they've already and, used it for intelligence, in, effect, in other words. They have, yeah. And they have confirmed that. Um, I've actually just sought out the quote just as you were asking me because I, I've taken a lot of notes here. And Seamus Boland did say um, that Gardy have done a lot of work in this in the last number of years and they are quite satisfied that they're in a position to be able to progress investigations like this. Um, and it would be ultimately down to the DPP to sign off on that, he said. And now, and after that, let the courts decide whether a person is guilty or innocent based off these uh, encrypted chats. Well, I will say one thing. I have absolutely no doubt if this does go to court, if it is used as evidence, there will be legal challenges to this. But that's the oh, way yeah. the Irish system works. There will absolutely be legal challenges to this, but it's up to the judges to decide on that. 
and as you said, I think we're going to be talking about this for years. They certainly indicated mm -hmm. that, you know, I mean, look, we're, we're in the start of a major investigation here that's going to go on for many years. They have indicated that they're going after the heads of this these crime groups. And just to clarify to people, um, Assistant Commissioner Kelly told us today that this operation in Ireland targeted specifically for organised crime groups in Ireland. We know that the main crime group target of this is the family, but there are three other organised crime groups also targeted in this operation. As I said, there were 33 searches uh, across the country. Uh, involving over 300 members of Angarda Siakana, specialist members of Angarda in uh, searches in Wexford, in Meath, uh, in Dublin uh, and in other places. And we know, uh, I just want to give off some of the, the incredible stats that they've given us. It, it, you know, this is only in the last 48 hours. Um, 300 Gardaí, uh, as I said, they seized two cryptocurrency keys, interestingly, uh, 27 laptops, 126 mobile devices, 200 SIM cards, six Rolex watches, and uh, a, also a 2021 Range Rover Jeep. And that's interesting because the Criminal Assets Bureau were also part uh, of this investigation. I, nearly every major bureau of Angarda Chicana was involved in this, um, and I'm not going to list them all out, but you can you can take it basically that the cyber crime lads, the National Drugs and Organised Crime uh, uh, Bureau and uh, the Criminal Assets Bureau, for example, were all involved in this also assisted by the FBI, um, you know, so it was an incredible, massive, massive policing operation. Let me ask you this. Is it fair to say that the Irish criminal played a significant role in the whole ghost system? In other words, it wasn't just a few criminals here, that the Irish criminals uh, accounted for a significant percentage of all users of this network. Yeah, well, again, um, uh, the Detective Chief Superintendent Boland told us, uh, uh, and, and also Assistant Commissioner Kelly, said that Ireland is the second highest user of this particular ghost network, second only to Australia. And uh, we were told that we had in excess of 8.3% of all devices were used here in Ireland in the region of 100 devices in total. Um, and uh, Seamus Boland told us that... Um, confirmed to us uh, what was suspected that a number of the individuals who have been arrested are suspected of being involved in facilitating those encrypted devices here in Ireland and distributing them not only to criminal gangs, but they were also trying to sell them uh, to a wider field of people. So they were involved in the uh, in 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 getting these devices, uh, getting the encrypted network on these devices and then facilitating them to the criminal gangs. So they believe Irish nationals were directly involved in working with international uh, gangs in helping to distribute this encrypted network here in Ireland. So if I'm if I'm correct in this, this ghost network was actually established in Australia. That appears to be yeah, what we are hearing that the, uh, the, uh, the I mean, it's the it was primarily used in Australia. And we believe uh, that uh, that was the breakthrough that Austra Australian federal police uh, in broke this encrypted app and then worked with Europol and our, our agencies here. That's interesting because we know that there are some criminals who increasingly use Australia. We know uh, crystal meth, for example, goes to Australia via Ireland in many cases. We know that people associated with the criminal, the Kinnan cartel, sort of in, set up a network themselves in Australia. Do you remember we had that story about mm. the, the Kinnan cartel sending drugs to Australia? Because cocaine is more expensive in uh, Sydney than it is in, in Blackrock here. So mm. there's big profits to be made there. So there has been a number of Irish criminals who have set up operation in Australia. And I think this is proof of this, that they're now using the the the, the connections and the networks that they establish to set up things like this ghost. And the, so that shows mm. that there must be a real nexus of, of communications there. Mm. It's fascinating. And, and it's great to hear that our police force here is now finally going to go after these gangs through these encrypted devices, because I think there was a frustration that they weren't really able to use the Encroach evidence in court here in Ireland. Um, and, and these gangs, I think, thought for the longest time that they could get away uh, with carrying out their criminal activities by using these devices. I think they've sent a strong message today um, that they're going to have to 
resort to another method of communicating with each other. I don't know whether it's going to be smoke signals or what what's left to them, you know. But we do know that EncroChat wasn't used as intelligence here, but you're right, it is a different kettle of fish to use something as intelligence as opposed to evidence. And evidence. I, want to ask, I want to ask you this, Paul. So this is the third, at least the third uh, uh, encrypted communication system that has been broken up by law enforcement. We had uh, EncroChat, which we've spoken about, and Sky Global, Sky ECC, which was the second one. I remember we spoke about this before and I said to you, Jesus, criminals would want to cop, you know, they'd want to stop using uh, encrypted things like this because it's not as safe as they thought they were. Mm-hmm. But these gangs, they've had two warnings and they still persisted with this one. So that might show that criminals are not as smart as people think. Well, I think they also assumed uh, that they, you know, that w- maybe especially in this country that Gardaí just wouldn't pursue it because they hadn't mm-hmm. pursued, uh, you know, well, they, they, the perception is that they hadn't pursued mm-hmm. it previously, uh, that that's been disproven now. Um, I, I just want to point out as well that, it, I mean, it, it was said to us repeatedly that this uh, operation is primarily targeting you know, the top tier of this criminal gang. So, I mean, it was very much, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't even say hinted, it was basically said to us that, you look, the, the top members, the leaders of this crime group, they want to prosecute them and they want them in court. If that happens, they will successfully dismantle this gang. Um, so, the, you know, make no bonds about it. Today was a significant, massive announcement and they indicated there will be further arrests. So, you know, this is only the start of it. Um, there's so much in it. I mean, I tried to get my head around it. Um, I want to just read out some of, of what Seamus Boland said to us because he mentioned the Kinnan and Hutch feud. Mm. Uh, and, you know, um, he said that he'd be very conscious that Gardaí have limited resources, um, you know, but since 2015, 2016, since the establishment of the National Drugs and Organised Crime Bureau, their policy basically has been to go after the top tier of these organized crime group networks. So, you know, I mean, that came in response to a question uh, of, you know, I mean, it, it, this is going to take years. I mean, and the amount of chats that you have to go through and all of the different elements to it, you know, I, I, is it ever going to get to the stage where you're going to prosecute people? So they, the very much the message was, you know, what we've learned from 2015, 2016, and with the establishment of the National Drugs and Organized Crime Bureau, their policy now is to go after the head of the snake, as I said, and, 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 while it might take time and the process takes a bit longer, they're very much focused on, you know, hitting them where it hurts, um, as opposed to just focusing on some of the lower tiers. Right. So the family, the, the family bosses are in trouble and have Deep every trouble. right to be worried. Deep trouble. That that is, that is the sense that I get. I, I, I'll, sorry, I'll just say, look, you know, if you have people like Jimmy Boland or Justin Kelly saying we're going after the heads, right? They must have a level of confidence that they've got them. Mm. You know, you know, it's like barristers only ask questions in court to which they know the answer. So, in other words, they'd look pretty foolish if they said we're we're, we're going after them. We think we're going to get them, and nothing happens. So, they obviously know more about it than we do. And I always sort of try and read the runes about what they're saying. There's a hidden meaning behind that. In other words, they must have mm. a level of confidence that we don't know about. Mm. And and they've made some pretty bold statements. I, I want to point out uh, uh, something that Assistant Commissioner Kelly said um, in the press conference in Europol. He mentioned, uh, he said, most significantly, we have dismantled a primary drugs trafficking route into mm. our country. So this operation, he says, has dismantled a a, a major trafficking route for criminal gangs. Um, because it's also important to point that out. You know, it's not that the drugs are just coming in to be used in this country, we are in many ways a facilitator for other European countries uh, and countries around the world. And what he's saying, and my reading from that is, uh, the the operation over the past 48 hours has significantly uh, disrupted a major criminal gang, uh, and, and a, in particular, a, a, a route that they had to get drugs into this country. And I point out that, you know, uh, that that incredible search of that particular articulated lorry, you know, that that was a route in which they believed this gang, the family, were getting the drugs in. That route has now been completely disrupted. And I think that's a fair point. So this is the second route that Doc B have destroyed or disrupted. In relation to this one gang alone, we had the Abbey Shrew, the, air, the airfield with the, mm. the flights coming in with the drugs. And now we have this, uh, the, the distribution network. So that's true. And I suppose... That's something I'd never thought about, but I presume it is hard to actually set up 
smuggling routes to actually find yeah. people because you can't put an advert on Craigslist. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. you have to work hard, I presume, to set up a route. And once the route is secure and it works, they get to depend on it. But the family have now lost two significant routes in a couple of years, and that must be devastating for them. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I think we're going to be talking about this for, for many more years mm-hmm. to come. As I said, while they have now disrupted um, some of the, I suppose, facilitators of drugs in this country, they still have to target the bosses of this. And then we're, it's very much indicated to us that that's what they're going to do. People might wonder, I'm just thinking this while I'm talking, you know, how come you can't name these people or, you know, give us more information about who they are? Um, The family are primarily run by two brothers who are very well-known organized criminals to Gardaí. And indeed, they've been written about and they've been before the courts and served time in prison. Mm. One of them is currently before the courts uh, on money laundering related charges. So we can't name that person because they're currently before the courts. And the other person... uh, Look, I mean, they're they're entitled to a certain level of protection under defamation laws in this country. But if they start lifting these people for, you know, these types of offences, it'll be a different story, especially when they're convicted. But look, they enjoy anonymity for the for the moment. Um, and that that's that's the situation that we're in. Were you struck by the international nature of this investigation, in other words, by the level of cooperation. I remember, I, I saw a picture today, there was, there were Gardaí, I think there was a Europol officer, was there an FBI, an Australian police officer at a yeah. house that looked like somewhere in Dublin, right? Mm. That reminded me, the Guardia Civil came here in 2016 as part of the investigation into the Kinahan cartel. And mm-hmm. you had, so you had Guardia Civil operators. There. Were you struck by the international nature of this? Yeah, I mean, it was very impressive, and, and and it's an indicator of just how far we have come. Um, I I think the Kin and Hutch feud, uh, as was mentioned, changed uh, the landscape here in this country. And our investigators, when they got the resources and the intel, uh, they realized that they were going to have to work more closely with countries around the world because these criminal gangs think that if they operate outside of Ireland, that they will escape prosecution and they're trying to prove that that's not the case and I I, I think particularly the involvement of the FBI uh, is a real indicator of how seriously they are taking this and indeed there was a speaker from the FBI at Europol so I mean to have the Americans involved the Australian Federal Police as well uh, it shows you there's no place to hide Uh, it's impressive to see that they are working together on this level And, and a significant part of this investigation is focused in Ireland and it's great to see these massive countries so invested uh, in in bringing justice to Ireland. I mean, I mean, we are kind of small potatoes, really, when you think about it, compared to the United States. But to have their involvement, and and indeed they're in, involved in the investigation into the Guinnahans as well, um, it, it is incredibly significant and great to see. Criminals have always disrespected borders, and they've used mm. borders to their advantage, even on a say a micro level. If there's a chase, uh, a pursuit, say, uh, Lifford, Straban, and the guards are chasing a fella at Lifford, and he, cro- he or she crosses the border at Straban, the guards can't do anything. So the criminals use the borders. And I've often thought that really, you know, God, law enforcement should do the same. In other words, because the criminals are acting internationally, law enforcement needs to act internationally. And this seems to be what is happening here. Mm. I, I just on this, I'll, I'll read another quote from Justin Kelly um, because it, it falls into that. He said, uh, the primary organized crime groups operating in Ireland are of a transnational nature. Mm. And uh, some of those inflicting harm in our communities purposely base themselves abroad to try and thwart the efforts of law enforcement. So it's vital that we have a coordinated international policing response. And he quoted Drew Harris saying that it often takes a network to defeat a network. Um, we've heard similar talk when it came to the uh, investigation into the Kinahans. Um I think there's a lot of, there, there, reading between the lines, uh, we've spoken about this, that there is a lot of confidence that they're going to be able to take this all the way and that they're going to be able to dismantle this crime group. Um, you know, I mean, cocaine and heroin is rampant in this country, in particular heroin, uh, this crime group has been behind and being the main supplier of heroin, which is a scourge in this country. So I, I think there is a lot of hope for the first time that they're going to be able to actually, you know, secure convictions against the, the more senior members of this crime group. There is one interesting aspect to this. They effectively said the Kinahan cartel has been dismantled mm-hmm. and these four groups have taken over from that. 
right? Yes. So if you do cut off the snake's head, unfortunately, you know, it's a great day for the guards. Breeds it, others. It does breed others. I mean, even thinking back when the Gilligan gang was smashed in 1997, 98, I could name four or five groups that came from that. Eamon Dunn, the Westies, you know, you, you know what I mean? So there is so much money to be made in the drugs business that of course other people are going to come involved and even what what they were saying about you know so there are now four gangs each of those gangs sort of stem from the Kenan cartel and that just goes to show you that people will step into the breach because there's so much money to be made yeah and and I, I you know they're all working together it was described to us as a fragmented environment mm -hmm. you know that is the environment that they are now in but um They've said, uh, you know, that uh, even some of these gangs would have been, if they weren't Kinahan cartel themselves, they were Kinahan affiliated. Mm -hmm. And it was now said that they operate alone. Um, so just because the Kinahan cartel has been disrupted, it hasn't stopped them uh, from operating. And and they've just changed up, really. And, and probably one of the ways they changed up when they thought they were secure was through this encrypted chat, which is now being broken. So... You know, um, I think they're seriously on the back foot. As I said, there's some organized criminals that are probably very nervous today. I wonder how criminals will start talking to each other now. I was going to suggest mm. that they that they would probably use call phone boxes, but there's very few mm. phone boxes in Ireland now. You know what I mean? I remember I would have, I would have, you know, done had some op operational security things when I was talking to various people, and I would have travelled around Dublin. Find now this was even a decade ago. Travel around Dublin trying to find phone boxes so I could ring people because I was worried about my phone being monitored or, or their phone, all that sort of stuff, right? But do you, I mean, how many phone boxes are there in Dublin? Mm. Very, very few. Mm. So it's going to be difficult. So I wonder, you know, there's that uh, Islamic loan system of people meeting face to face and giving each other money. I wonder if you're going to have to see couriers. Going from one person to another, going from Ireland to England to Spain, deliver messages verbally to people because they are so worried about things. I think honestly, I mean, I think this is a serious problem for criminals. They think they, they have over relied on technology and mm. they're finding that they are finding that out to their cost and the guards are finding it to their benefit that mm. technology is not all it cracked up to be. It is cracked up to be. It, it's it's reminding me of what probably just because I've just watched it uh, the wire um you know I was you know the the I don't want to spoil too much on people who haven't watched it it's an incredible series but um you know in the kind of the final season and uh, there's a, a gangster Marlo Stanfield and he thinks he's kind of outsmarted uh the police because they're using a, a system a bizarre system where they send each other a picture of a clock and depending on the time that it is it means uh, a place that they're going to meet and talk so they don't discuss anything Thing over the phone they discuss in person but the picture of the clock is how they communicate but eventually they do obviously uh dismantle even that so i wonder is that the level that they're going to have to go to now they're going to have to start sending each other code uh like pictures of clocks and whatnot to, Possibly, <laughs> but even burner phones burner phones aren't that secure because guards can somebody told this to me ages ago you know if you have a burner phone Guards can still cry and try and clean it, and guards can go, well, who did, who rang this fella or who rang them? So, you know, they're not all there. They're not the be all and end all either. Technology, I think, is on the side of law enforcement, and this shows it. And I think we'll be talking about this for Operation Kraken for quite some time to come. So, anorak that I am, I went to check what a Kraken is, because I, <laughs> I didn't know what it was. As many tentacles. It's a mythical sea creature from yes. between Norway and Iceland. Mm -hmm. Ah, ah so, okay. Wikipedia is your friend. Fascinating. Well, it's I mean, there's nine countries involved in this investigation. Um, you know, so that is incredibly significant. And and that gives a certain boost of confidence as well that they're gonna have to get results from this and they will, uh, because it, it does it's not just firmly lying on Gardy's shoulders to, you know, it, it's in the interest of multiple countries for there to be something coming out of this. I'm I'm hopeful just and I don't want to criticize anybody, but I, I'm just, look, it's, it's, it was 2022 when we were talking about the Kinahans and, you know, this was the, the death knell, the final blow for the Kinahans. I'm, I'm going to balance this in, in one sense, obviously, as was communicated to us today, the Kinahan cartel has been largely dismantled in terms of its operations here in Ireland anyway. Um, not destroyed, but, but torn apart. Um, but the negative side of that is here we are, two years later, and they haven't uh, secured 
the prosecutions yet of the people that they openly named in that press conference. So I just hope, yeah, I hope we're not two, three years down the line from this announcement today also saying, you know, um, you know, the net is closing in and uh, it still hasn't closed in yet. These things do take time. Um, but, you know, you'd hope that uh, we see some results from this. Hope. MV Matthew was September 2023. Mm-hmm. The Kenyans were involved in that. And that was more than 18 months after the sanctions were imposed. So look, they obviously have been dismantled and they are downgraded and whatever you want to use it here. But the Kenyans are still a massive world organisation. And, and even that MV Matthew, that was... A global scale, I, I sort of got the sense that the Kenyans have are done for in Ireland, but there is plenty of money and pl- there are plenty of operations for them to be involved in on a global scale. They are a global cartel, so we haven't heard the last of them, and they are a different level. Oh, yeah, and it's not to dismiss that. Uh, you know, I mean, Seamus Boland didn't dismiss that either. If you just read the words that he actually said to us, he said it is no longer the primary organised gang in this jurisdiction mm-hmm. or impacting on this jurisdiction. So that doesn't mean they're not impacting on other jurisdictions. They are a global cartel. There's no doubt about that. Sure, he only said what we told Shattered Lives in the last couple of years, that the family is the number one. So we're, you know, <laughs> Okay. Well, listen, it it was a fascinating day and that's why we are a day early with our podcast today because uh, it was obviously a significant Mm -hmm. Garda announcement. Um, So thanks to our listeners um, and we'll be back to you next week. Yes, and I can guarantee you this is the first uh, part about cracking. It will not be the last. Thanks Thanks very much. Thanks.